What's up, everybody? So today we are going to do a bit of a session about how to use an alternative to SPSS, and that is Jamovi. And there are multiple alternative software for SPSS. Now, most of you are uh, following my research methods content. And something that you have noticed is that, uh, of course, we have to use statistics to get our research done. And for the most part, uh, in the past few uh, months, I have been using uh, R Studio as my go-to software to do most of my analysis. But if you are someone who is uh, currently going through an undergraduate program, maybe your university requires you to always use SPSS. Uh, depending on the kind of degree program that you do, different universities would suggest you to use uh, other software as well. But at least in the field of psychology, SPSS is like the go-to software. Now, there are a few reasons why I sometimes tell students to go for alternative softwares. One, uh, SPSS is very expensive. If your university is providing SPSS to you, then that is very good. But if your university is not giving you SPSS, then what happens is you might have to purchase it. And when you want to purchase something like uh, SPSS, of course, there will be like an annual fee if I'm not mistaken. So you have to renew it every year. Now, there are a lot of software for qualitative work and also quantitative work. So uh, today we are going to have a discussion about Jamovi, the software, which is an alternative that you can consider for SPSS. Now, in terms of the functionality, I don't think Jamovi has everything that SPSS has. Or SPSS, I would say, offer quite a lot of other things as well. But then again, if you are a student, Jamovi still covers most of the things that you would require. Now, here's what I'm going to do today. Now, like I told, the first reason is, you know, it's expensive. But that being said, another reason is, now, uh, if you use a Mac computer, then anyways, SPSS, even though the normal software works, the AMOS never works uh, on a Mac computer. And as a result, of course, you can't run any uh, confirmatory fact analysis or anything like that. So therefore, still, Jamovi could be another better alternative. Now, let's see how exactly we can get Jamovi. So let me share my screen here. Now, there's a downloadable version of Jamovi as well. And if not, you can uh, straight away use their cloud version as well. But I think if you can download the software and install it in your Mac computer, well, that's wonderful as well. So you just search Jamovi. And then you will get this search result, Jamovi Open Statistical Software for Desktop and Cloud. So you please click on this. And then they ask whether you need the cloud version. So if you click on the cloud version, you can enter it here itself. So uh, very self-explanatory. And then if you want the desktop, you can you know go ahead and click on this. Now, if you are using a Mac OS, or if, you're, uh, if you are using a Mac computer, the Mac OS, they suggest two of these. Uh, the solid version and the current version. So the current version has the latest features, but then they say solid is recommended for most users. So I actually went with this uh, so 2.3.28 solid. So I guess you guys can go through the same as well. Okay, so that is just how you would install. I think it's about a 900 megabytes. So you download it and install it. So installation is very straightforward. So I'm not going to spend time on uh, explaining how to install this, but without further ado, let's actually go through a sample data set. And also let's just see how exactly we are going to include this or do some basic analysis on Jamovi. But before we start, let me introduce you to my data set. I actually recently got some of my students to collect a little bit of data, and then I'm going to use that data to help all of you understand how to do some basic analysis in uh, Jamovi. Now, this is the data set. I ask about uh, 60 of my students to go ahead and collect data. Uh, basically, you know, 
information related to gender and then uh, information related to age year of study and then we administered general self-efficacy scale so here we have the total of the generalized self-efficacy scale here we have 10 items so here we have the total for each individual and then we administered general anxiety disorder scale it has seven items and here you see the total so uh, we ran a bit of a correlation here so it's the correlation scatter plot with the best fit line and then uh, we also obtained a correlation coefficient of negative 0 0.273 uh, for this proposed hypothesis, which is you know anxiety and self-efficacy share a uh, specific relationship. Now, this is the data set. So it's a smaller data set, and we have, like I told, 120, or not even 120, so I think 112. 112 people. So here's what we are going to do. Now I'm going to open up Jamo. I'm going to load this data and I'm going to see how exactly we are going to do, run this analysis. And I, I need to tell you this. I haven't used Jamo actually per se. I have been using Excel. I have been using R. I have been using SPSS. But then oh, there was another software that I use called JASP. That is also something that you can use. But I think compared to JASP and compared to SPSS Jamu is an ideal tool that uh, you could utilize as well. Okay, so let me open up Jamu first. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so this is my desktop or user interface. Oh, I don't know how you call it. This is my screen. So I'm going to my applications and I'm opening up Jamu. Okay, so it's loading now. All right, now let's see. Now this is your basic interface. And as you see here, it's pretty similar to something like SPSS. But then again, uh, on the right side, you usually get your output. And on your left side, you can see your data. And there are some basic tabs that you can see. I think one, one thing I noticed here is that this is very easy to use because it's very comprehensive. So if you know your statistics, it's very easy. You have exploration here so that you can do all your descriptives through this. And then you have t-tests here, you have ANOVAs here, regressions here, you have a little bit of frequencies and all of that. And you can use this factor option to run your reliability analysis, principal component analysis, so that's exploratory fact analysis. And then, you know, you have confirmatory as well. Frequencies you have here for independent samples, paired samples, and all of that. And then regression correlation matrix, partial correlation, linear regression, and all of that. Then you have all your ANOVAs here, MANOVAs, MANCOVA. Oh, no, not MANOVA. Actually, they have MANCOVA. But they should have manuals as well. I haven't checked that as of now, but let's see. And here we have t-test independent paired sample and one sample t-test. And we have our exploration here, scatter plots, parity charts, descriptives. There's an edit tab. Let's see why exactly we would need that. There's the analysis tab, data tab. You can, you know, you actually have a little bit of functions that you find on Excel here as well. So I would say this is a combination of both Excel and SPSS, but it's it's very user friendly. And this is free of charge as well. So it's a lovely thing to have a free of charge software. And here you have another one for variables, but let's click on this and we are going to import some data. Let's do that. So, uh, okay, I'm going to open up some data and then browse. Okay, so I'm going to load my Excel data. Now it will take a while. Yes, coming up, okay. Now this is actually my data and you can actually change how much you want to see by you know sliding this dough kind of a thing. Now, when I, if you notice here, I have a gender column and next to that I have included some numbers so female i have recognized it as two and male i have recognized it as one because you need to have values included 
in SPSS to run an analysis. So that Excel file that I showed you earlier, I actually did this variable so that I could come up with some values so I can create this variable on SPSS. As well. So I don't need this actually. So I'm going to just remove this guy. I don't need this. Okay, delete it just like this. And then here I have my age variable. Here I have my year of study variable, my general self-efficacy variables, and then my total. Here I have my total, and then get seven ones as well. Now these are from, again, from the Excel, the little analysis that I ran. I don't need this. I'm going to delete these guys as well, okay? Hit delete. Okay, delete. Now, I need to edit some of my variables. Why? Because all of this seems to be in nominal, you know, uh, because the total variables are the variables where you have the total values. These are not nominal variables. Of course, this should be in scale. So we need to change this. So I'm going to start some, start doing some changes. So you double click on this age, or if not, you know, you can right click and go to setup as well. And then they ask, measurement type or measure type. So I'm going to just say continuous because it is actually continuous, right? Because we get a final score. It, but it, it might not make too much of sense. And then I'm going to again click on GSCS total and I'm going to select continuous. And I'm going to do the same for get seven total as well. I'm going to hit on continuous. Now this is the same total of GSCS again. I don't need this. I'm going to just remove it. Okay, now I have a pretty decent looking set of data. You can create new variables and add data from here as well. But as a practice, I always uh, use Excel to clean my data. And once I have a clean set of data, then it's just a matter of putting it to any software because Excel file is accepted in uh, R as well, Excel file is accepted in Jamovi as well. So might as well just have the Excel file and then do the needful. Now let's see how to run some basic descriptives. So click on exploration, go to descriptives. And now very similar to SPSS here also, they will ask you select your descriptives and then you can transfer it to the variable side. So let's just transfer age. Here I have some information, so I have that information here. N is 112, so we have uh, 112 uh, 12 individuals here. Mean age is 20.9, relatively uh, a younger crowd. I told these are my students. And then median is 21.0, standard deviation 1.66. The minimum age in the sample is 17 and the maximum age in the sample is 27. Pretty good, okay. Now we can add more data to here as well. So here I have another continuous variable. I'm going to add this guy as well and boom, my data just appears just like this. So we don't need this data column here, okay. So once again, mean efficacy score is 28.9, slightly lower than usual. Median is 29.0, standard deviation 4.14, uh, with a minimum of 16 and a maximum of 38. Now, sometimes we see 40 out of 40 as well, especially in instances we measure efficacy, but in this sample, we don't have that. Now, let's take the next one as well. Get seven. Once again, mean is 7.91, median is 7.50, standard deviation 3.98, and then uh, the maximum is 23. Now, if you want to split this data by, let's say, gender, you can actually add another splitting variable here as well, but I'm not going to do that here. So I'm going to just take you through more descriptive data. Now here, I don't need this missing value, so I'm going to just de-click this so that went just like that you know it went away if you need mode and some you can actually click on those as well so let's click on mode so once again the most common age is 20 the most common here the most frequent uh, gscs total is 29 and the get seven total the most common one is or the most frequent one is seven 
you can if you want you can give some mesh where i'm going to get variance now range and interquartile range i'm not going to go for those but i need some information about my distribution so i'm going to click on skewness and kurtosis now let's see this now age skewness is fine you know very close to zero if it is usually between minus two and plus two generally they are okay but the closer it is to zero the better because if uh, it goes beyond one sometimes when you run a test it might still say it is not uh, what you call uh, normal now if you see gses is 0 0.1 get is 0 0.8 now this is to see whether we have a tail to one of the ends in a distribution now here we have kurtosis age 1.01 and then gscs is very close to zero and then gets seven is again 1.2 and so i'm pretty sure at least one of these variables is not normally distributed so how am how am i going to check it further when you let's say you are working on a research you can actually use these descriptive distribution related values to say that your data looks normal but if there is something that goes beyond one point something, especially for skewness or kurtosis, I generally go for a normal test, normal test as well. Now let's do Shapiro Wilk. Okay. Now see, age and then get seven. Both of these seems to have some issues with their normality. GSCS is pretty okay. It is pretty normally distributed. Why? Because the resulting, uh, the p-value of shapiro wilk shouldn't be less than 0 0.05. If it is less than 0 0.05, what it means is your data is significantly different from that of a normal distribution. So you have not met normality. Now here, uh, what we see is not so normal data. Both get seven and age. Here we don't meet normality. And if you see, I think it has come because of this kurtosis values. So here the kurtosis is one, here also the kurtosis is 1.29. So our data could be, you know, a little bit too pointy. That could be, you know, the reason. And we can actually observe this. How are we going to observe this? We can actually go for some plots. So here, let's go for that as well. Let's generate some plots. You can actually get a histogram for all your three variables. Now, here, if you notice, in both of these, in both of these now, age, of course, see, it's a little bit skewed as well, but most of the data you would find here in this particular region, uh, GAC is total, yes, slightly skewed because I think we have some uh, very uh, low scores as well. Get seven, yes, definitely a little bit skewed, but I think we have uh, some, a little, our data is a little bit pointy as well because uh, here we have most of our data somewhere here. So I think that is why, and GAC is once again the same thing. I think that's why we actually had something like that and uh, in addition to that if you want you can actually go for a pp plot so here we have qq plots so if that is something that you would need to further check you can go for that as well but i think just for three variables these are pretty okay yeah these are pretty okay so nothing unusual so now with this now let's say we want to run a correlation for these three variables. Uh, how exactly we are going to do that? So before that, I'm going to just click on exploration again, and I'm going to generate a scatter plot. Now you can generate multiple scatter plots here. Let's say I want to put age as one of my variables, and I'm going to put efficacy as my second variable. So age and efficacy seems to be having, now this is the scatter plot. Here we don't have the best fit line. It seems like it's a positive correlation. So let's click on linear. Yeah, here we have a positive correlation. Not a very steep association. You don't see a steep line here. So not 
very it is positive but it is not very significant uh, or the coefficient is not indicative of a stronger correlation rather and then uh, we can do the same once again for anxiety as well now see efficacy and age has a positive correlation so the more uh, older you get the more you tend to believe in yourself uh, this is why you know getting good data is very important because if your sample is not uh, random we can't be 100 percent sure now i i obtained this data 100 percent through a college campus maybe you know 80 to 85 percent because some of the students uh, most of the students collected data from uh, outside as well but the majority comes from a university and then we have a very younger crowd but within this age bracket of 17 and 27 this is the kind of data that we get now i'm going to run this to get seven and you know uh, gses so okay let's take gses here so efficacy and get seven that also has a negative correlation yeah that is expected the more you believe in yourself the lesser uh, anxious you are going to get now these are the plots so pretty easy to run. And then I can do a correlation analysis as well. So let's click on regression and I'm going to get a correlation matrix. I'm going to get just my three variables here to this side. Okay. Now, if your data is normal, you can go for Pearson. If your data is not normal, then you can go for Spearman. So I'm going to just click on both and let's see what kind of uh, data we have now if you notice i i don't know whether you guys notice but i think the only drawback in this software is the the moving you know the three components here you have an output you have like a, a place where you do all your process and on the left side you have your a data set and for some reason, when I move my cursor, it keeps on, you know, coming back. But I really don't want that here. Oh, it came back again. But I don't need it. So I'm going to just keep this guy somewhere here. Okay. Now, age uh, and GSCS, yes, it's a positive correlation. Pearson, 0 0.138. But if you get... Uh, Spearman, that is 0 0.153. So I'm going to go with Spearman for everything because two of our variables are not normal distributed. So 0 0.153, but not a very, uh, it's not statistically significant. Uh, age and get seven, negative 0 0.206, and that is statistically significant as well. Get seven, and uh, so that's the Pearson value. Spearman value would be negative 0 0.221. Once again, yeah, statistically significant. And then GAT7 and GSC is total, Spearman, negative 0 0.322. And that is also, you know, uh, statistically, I think it's very significant. Now, if you look at all of this, uh, if you see here, GAT7 and GSC is, that is 0 point, uh, negative, uh, 273. That's a Pearson correlation value. This is the same value I obtained using the Corel function on Excel as well. So I think then in that uh, Excel, that Corel function also gives Pearson correlation. So I think based on the kind of data that we have here, we can go for Spearman. So negative 0 0.322. Now, like I told, it's a very easy software to use. Now, the intention of this video is to show how to do some basic descriptives and how to run the basic correlation. But I think, if you just look at it, it's a very easy software to use. We entered our data, actually we uh, imported our data, and then with a few clicks, it gives output on a different, not exactly a different window, but on a different section of the uh, main user interface. So I think it's a pretty good software, and you can see all your analysis here as well. I think it's it's a very clean a cleaner software as well. You can see your descriptives, you can see your plots here, you can see your scatter plot, and you can see your correlation matrix. So it's wonderful. I think you know uh, that's the word that I actually wanted to give. It's it's a wonderful software, 
and you can select your type of hypothesis as well. So here my hypothesis, if I have said my two variables just correlate with each other, then yes, this is exactly what they are going to test. And if you want to give a directional hypothesis, like my uh, variables are negatively correlated or my variables are positively correlated, and they can actually test that as well to see whether it is meeting the hypothesis that you have specified. So yes, in terms of the two software. So let's uh, go for our final verdict. Now, what is the best software? Is it the SPSS or is it Jamovi? I think if you are a first year student, won't make too much of a difference, but in terms of the ease of using, I think for a first year student, Jamovi would be an excellent software. But do you need to learn SPSS? Yes, probably the university might tell that you want to learn uh, all of these tasks through SPSS. And of course, SPSS has a bit more functionality as well. And uh, I haven't 100% you know, gone through all the uh, nitty gritty details about Jamovi, but at least in my experience, it's, it's a very clean software, very easy to use. And I actually love using that as well. And whenever I don't have any of these things met in Jamovi, what I usually do is I go to R and I run my analysis on R. So I think if you have both of these, uh, you can use uh, the two software instead of using SPSS. I think everyone is hell-bent on SPSS, but then again, uh, these are freely available software one could use. You can use SPSS, but then again, you can learn and get yourself to use these kind of software as well. So I'm pretty happy with this software. I think you will be happy if you use this software as well. And I am uh, by no means, you know, I am promoting this software. I'm getting anything in return, you know, by talking about Jamovi. Uh, and uh, you might see that I have uh, explained things using manual techniques, how to do calculations and using software as well. So the intention here is to get the students to basically experience the software you know to understand little things like how to run some basic descriptives and how to do a correlation in future i will give more information about for example how to run a fact analysis and things like that yes so if you can run fact analysis in a simpler software like this i think it is the best thing to do because if you get r for an example uh, I primarily use R as a visualization tool so that I can visualize certain images and all of that in the way that I actually like. But if you forget about that, the basic analysis, even basic exploratory fact analysis or confirmatory fact analysis, you can get it done from here. And if you are not you know, satisfied with your images, you can download a software like uh, Draw.io and then you can generate your diagrams like SIM diagrams, fact analytic diagrams and all these kind of things. So you don't need to stick to a particular software always. So you can use a multiple software to get your work done. As long as you are happy, I think we are meeting the requirements. So this is it from my end for today. And I hope you have some understanding about how to do descriptives and how to run a correlation through Jamovi. So final verdict, do I love Jamovi? Well, of course, what is there to hate, right? So we'll meet up again with a similar lecture or similar video like this uh, in future. So thank you very much for watching my video and uh, feel free to check the uh, rest of the videos as well uh, in my research methods playlist. And if you still haven't subscribed, so please go ahead and subscribe as well. So thank you very much. I will see you again.